What's up guys, Chicks here from Chicks Tech Reviews. Today I've got my hands on the latest X3 Pro Android TV box. Now this is a small compact full Android TV box powered by the S905 X3. You've got the Mali G3 one with four gigs of DDR4 RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, dual band Wi-Fi AC, a gigabit LAN, Bluetooth version 4.2. You've got full Android version 9 Pi, supports 4K HDR at 60 frames per second with HDMI version 2.1 and supports 5.1 surround sound. Now quickly show you what's inside the box. So you get a small external antenna, which I am going to quickly screw onto the box. Power socket, and you'll notice that the power socket is actually micro USB, and the power is 5 volts, 2500 MA. You're also getting a short HDMI cable, a 3.5 millimeter to infrared cable, a standard remote control powered by two AAA batteries, and of course, the TV box itself. Now, you've got a shiny black finish with a chrome trim going all the way around. On the front, we have some vents, micro SD card slot, USB 2, USB 3. And on this side, we have micro USB power socket, AV out, your infrared port, and also a power indicator on the side. On the back, we've got our external antenna, which I've already fitted, a reset hole just in front of it, a gigabit LAN, an SPDIF optical connection. You've got more vents. And on the side, you have your HDMI port. So that brings us back to the front. And this is what the bottom of the box looks like. So we have quite an interesting layout. I do like that we've got the expansion ports at the front for convenience. External antenna, so I'm hoping we're going to get a decent Wi-Fi connection. So without any further ado, let's get this little beast connected to my TV and capture card and find out exactly what it's capable of. I'll be right back. So first of all, I run a boot up speed test. And this TV box took 31 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. And here is the home screen for this TV box. You have full Android version 9 desktop layout. And I'm pleased to confirm that you do have a pull down status bar at the top and a navigational bar at the bottom. You've got a few shortcuts on this page, which you can customize yourself with the app draw button in the middle. Now let's quickly go over to the main settings click on device preferences and check out system storage info. So this box has 32 gigs of internal storage from which you have 27 gigs free to use. And if we have a quick look in about, you will see that this is running Android version nine Pi. Now this box does have some customization options. We have USB mode and you have a few options to play with and the option to disable the USB ports whilst the system goes to standby. Power options allows you to tweak the way the system functions while it's on standby and you do have some better options to play around with. Now this box actually has two different home screens that you can use. The Launcher 3 which you've already seen and you also have the Yugos Launcher which I'm about to show you guys. And here is the Yugos Launcher. You have your main navigation menu on the left with local time at the top along with storage and connection info. Now the launcher looks pretty good and it's quite smooth in functionality. Although pink may not be everyone's cup of tea, I am pleased to tell you that you can completely customize the color layout and the background of this home screen. Now if we go back to the main settings and this time check out X3 settings, you'll be delighted to see even more customization options beginning with root switch. So you can decide whether your box is rooted or not. It's very easy to install and uninstall root from here. Next option is file server client supporting Samba, NFS and a few others. You've got playback settings where you can set automatic frame rate to switch on. You've got hardware monitor so you can click any of these and it will show you their status in the status bar at the top. And that includes CPU temperature, CPU frequency, CPU load, MAC address, IP and lots more. The wireless assistant will allow you to download an app and let you control this box with your smartphone, kind of like a smartphone remote control. Now gamepad settings will let you configure and customize your game controller. And if that's not enough, you've got debug settings, user scripts, you can activate and disable your system bars, and you've got input device settings. So lots of advanced customization options included in this TV box. Now let's have a look at the complete system apps. 
Here are all the apps available on this box as standard. I have not installed anything yet. These are your standard apps and you have quite a few to get you started, including BT Sport, Live Net TV, Air Screen, and of course the full version of the Google Play Store, giving you access to thousands of free games and apps. Now the first thing we are going to test is Air Screen, which is screen mirroring for your iOS devices. And I'm pleased to say that it does work with my iPhone and iPad and connecting was quick and easy and it does work absolutely fine with very minimal lag. And I also tested out Miracast for the Android devices and connected to my P30 Pro was very quick and easy and again it mirrored my smartphone screen absolutely fine with very minimal lag. So now I'm going to play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and I will be doing this with the standard movie player. So let's go ahead and play the first file. Moving on now to the YouTube test and you can stream a maximum of 4K on YouTube. This place is amazing. Oh, thank you. This is your room. If you need anything, I'll be upstairs. Thank you. I don't want to go to Today might be a good day. Hope is a dangerous thing. So that brings us to the Netflix test. Now, like with most boxes, Netflix is not available from the Google Play Store. You actually have to sideload it from Aptoid TV or some other source. And the maximum resolution supported is 480p. Imagine five tons of angry elephant bearing down on you and having nowhere to hide. Now I'm running at full speed. So moving on now to the gaming test, beginning with Asphalt 8. So for you advanced users, DRM info shows Google Widevine level 3 and here is CPU Z where you can check out the clock speeds and you can see that we're running the Mali G3 1. This box does have Android version 9 and you can decide whether the box is rooted or not. And in the Wi-Fi speed test we got download speeds of 54 and upload speeds of 18 megabits per second. Now I've just started testing internal storage speeds for TV boxes to make sure we are getting what is advertised in terms of speed and here are the results for this box. We have read speeds of 110 and write speeds of 101. So that will bring us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench multi-score of 2270 and in the Antutu benchmark test we achieved a total score of 76k. So let's see how that compares with the others. And here is my top performing Android TV box chart for 2020, showing you the latest TV boxes and seeing how they compare with each other. And as you can see, the new X3 Pro has taken position 11 on this chart with a rating of 4.4 out of five. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the new X3 Pro. So here are my thoughts on this box. You have a great overall performance. Supports 4K60 from USB, streams 4K on YouTube, 
You have USB 3 and this supports Miracast and AirPlay. You have good gaming performance and can play more or less any game from the Play Store on medium to high settings. This comes with two different home screens to choose from and lots of advanced customization options including a root switch. So this is a real beast of a TV box for under $100. Now the only drawback is the 480p limitation on Netflix and Amazon Prime Video which is obviously due to lack of licensing. But the other issue I was not expecting, there is no built-in infrared in this TV box for the remote control. So you actually have to use the included infrared cable. Now, infrared is basic enough to be included in all TV boxes, but for some reason, X3 Pro decided that they don't need to give us an infrared port. However, you do have the option to connect a Bluetooth keyboard, mouse, or even a wireless mini keyboard. Bottom line, I really do like this box. It ticks more or less all the boxes and gives you everything you could possibly want from an Android TV box minus the Netflix HD. Now I've also heard that this box can be officially flashed to run a true dual boot with Android 9 and Core Elect Linux. And if you want me to make a video on how you can flash this TV box with the dual boot, then let me know by smashing the like button and leaving a comment below. So with that being said, I will leave the links in the description box below so you guys can check this product out. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.